Good morning, good morning. You guys doing all right today? I am excited about today. Wasn't that great? Boy, I put him out on the, I, I, I made him stretch. I'm like, I'm, I asked him last week, I think it was early this week, I said, would you get up here and do it? And I, I, I personally called him and I said, hey, I said, um, I want to know if you'll lead us in worship this week. And, and uh, he said, he paused for a minute and said, uh, that would be cool. <laughs> and so I was, I was glad to honor him. That was his first time ever in front of, wow. yeah, first time ever. He plays in front of his mom and dad at night. He practiced the other night till 11 o'clock at night. But that was his first time in front of you all, in front of a, a crowd like this. So... What a, what a sweetheart, what a sweet spirit that he brought this morning. I'm just thankful for, the, for that. Yeah, yeah, for sure, Bob. Really, 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 for sure. Just keep praying for our children. God's going to take them places. We need to stay behind them. We need to lift them up. How many of you know this morning that God has the final word? You guys believe that this morning? I want you to say it. God has the final word. One, two, three, say it. God has, God has the final word this morning. I want you guys to know that. I want you to put that in your heart and in your mind to know that he has the final word this morning. I remember, um, some of you might remember, some of you might not. Six years ago tomorrow, six years ago tomorrow, I was dead in a car at a traffic light. But God has the final word. I was laying in a car, bleeding out. But God had the final word. Brought me back to life. It gave me another chance. Showed me some things in heaven that were amazing. Walked face to face with Jesus. Looked at him in his eyes and couldn't tell the color of his eyes. I could just tell they just kept glistening and changing colors as I was looking into his eyes, staring into his face. And I'm so grateful and thankful that I got to come back to life and got to be here with you all this morning. Him having the final word is so valuable to understand that and to know we you have your Bibles, turn to Proverbs 16, verse 1. This is how the message translation, it says this. It says, mortals make elaborate plans. You ever made elaborate plans for yourself? It says, but God has the last word. We make our plans in life, but I want you to know that God has the last word. No matter what plans that we make, he has the last word. And in 1 Peter 3, says this in the Message Bible. Jesus has the last word on everything and everyone from angels to armies. He stands right alongside God and what he says goes. He has the final word. Whether you choose to serve him or not. If you choose not to serve Jesus, he still has the final word. If you choose to serve him, he has the final word. He wants a people that will let him in. He wants a people that will let him have his way. And I believe this morning that's what he's called for all of us. I want to encourage you this morning first to choose him we're going to talk about some stories this morning in the Bible that's going to tell you of the, what God can do no matter what you've been through in life no matter the struggles, the battles that you've been through in life we've all been through battles, we've all been through struggles we've all lost loved ones we've all had people leave us we've all been in different ways abused whether it's verbally physically, mentally abused. We've all been through some of these things in life. 
And as you can probably remember, I remember times in my life when I had teachers tell me that, that I would amount to nothing. Anybody ever have a teacher tell you that? One of my dads said that I wasn't going to make it to heaven because of the life that I was living. And sometimes words like that can affect you. Words like that can change you and, 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 and change your direction in life and make you not want to amount to anything because if no one thinks you're going to amount to anything, you might just go that way and not even amount to anything. But I want you to know that God has the final word. If you will give him your life, if you will serve him, if you will trust him, if you will lean upon him, he will give you the final word. Let's just pray this morning. Father, we love you right now. We glorify you. Lord, you know this message this morning that you have speaking positivity in the lives of your people, speaking encouragement in the lives of your people. God, I thank you this morning that you are merciful, you're mighty, you're righteous. You're such a good God. In Jesus' name, amen. I want a question for you this morning. How many of you ever, how many of you have ever wished that someone could see you now? Someone in your life, you just wish, man, I wish they could see me now. I wish they could see me now. I've got people in my life that have been in my life before. I said, man, I wish they could see me now. Doing what I'm doing now, from where I was to where I am, I wish they could see me now. David, just hours before he had won the battle, hours after he had been fighting this battle with the Amalekites. Do you guys know the story of David? I'm hope. I hope you know the story of David. But he was fighting this battle, the Amalekites. And when he won the battle, at the end of the battle, 36 hours or something like that, around 36 hours after he had won the battle, he was made king. And then 15 years, this was 15 years, he was 30 years old at this time when he was proclaimed the king. Fifteen years. How long will you wait for your blessing? How long will you wait for the promise that God has for you? How long will you stay in that place of waiting and not giving up, knowing that God has the final word in your life? How long will you stay in that place of prayer, knowing that God has the final say in your life? This is so important this morning that you know that no matter what you go through, David went through so many things in that time period. From the time that he was anointed to be king and from the time that he was made king, he went through so many battles and fought so many things. He fought giants. His wives were captured. The city that they were at was burned down. Yet David continued to have faith in God. David continued through the battles, through the struggles, through the trials. He continued to have faith in God. And I know that some of you have been through so much in life, and I want you to continue to have faith. I want you to continue to know that God has a promise for you, that God has a blessing for you. God wants so much for you this morning. In David's life, God had the final word. In your life, he has the final word. You guys know the story of Job. The story of Job is an amazing story. It's a long story. It's an amazing story of a man who was perfect according to the word of God and upright in all of his ways. And God let, listen, I want you to know, and we're going to read this in just a minute. God let some things come into his life. Job was a very wealthy man. 
he had a big family and he had a vast flock of animals. He was wealthy. And just because we have things, just because life is going well, just because things are going good in your life, doesn't mean that God's not going to bring a test to your life to see where you're at with him, to see how much you really trust him and trust that he has the final word, that he has the final say in your life. If you have your Bibles, turn to Job 1, starting with verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, where do you come? Where do you come from? And then Satan answered and said to him, from roaming about the earth, walking all around it. And the Lord said to Satan, listen. Have you considered my servant Job? See, the enemy was walking around seeking whom he may devour. And God said, have you considered my son Job, my servant Job? There's going to be times that you're going to have a test in your life and things might be going great and all of a sudden you seem like everything falls out from under you. Don't let those things move you. If you know and trust that God has the final word and final say in your life, you cannot let those things move you. You have to just go with the blow, go with the flow of it, and just let God have his way. Because in the end, the final word that God has is going to be the best word. It's going to be the best thing for you. It's going to be the thing that, that is going to produce the most out of your life. That final say is going to be the thing that produces the best thing out of your life. Have you considered my servant Job? For there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man. What does God say about you this morning? Are you blameless? Are you upright? Are you in the word? I saw a young boy sitting back here this morning. Dyson, sitting back here. Marking his Bible up. Reading his Bible. Marking it up. Writing things in it. That's powerful. When a young child is seeking God with everything in him. You watch his life. You just keep watching his life. I want you to watch it from this moment on. His life is going to continue to be expedited to the greatness of what God has for him because of his obedience. You want to see what happens. Watch when a child is obedient to God. Watch what happens to their life when they know that God has the final word in their life. Listen. Have you considered my servant Job? There's no one like him, blameless and upright, fearing me and turning from evil. And then Satan answered to the Lord, Does Job fear you for nothing? You have made him a hedge, you have made a hedge about him and his house, and all he has on every side. God will set a hedge of protection around you, but there's gonna be times. He'll let the enemy in just to see where you stand, just to see where you are, just to see how much you really, really do love him and how much things in your life are over top of him or, or take the place of him. And basically God said, do whatever you want to do with him. Just don't touch him. Strip everything he has. And so when the enemy gets that kind of permission... Because he has to have permission first and foremost. You, have, you need to understand that when you're a child of God, the enemy has to have permission to step into your life. According to this right here, the enemy has to have permission to step into your life. Unless you let him in. If you let him in, you've given him that authority. But if you don't let him in and something happens in your life, it's because God has let, given that opportunity. And that's when we need to stand strong, knowing who we are and whose we are knowing that, that he has nothing on us. Even if he takes our life, it's nothing. Because why? Because we have Jesus in the end. He has the final say. I said you've set a hedge of protection around him 
And he said, you have blessed all the works of his hand. God wants to bless you. You've blessed all the work of his hands. And and it's positioned him to increase in the land. He told him to take it all. He took it all from him. He took his children, their homes, his flocks. Everything was gone except for his wife. And she was even nagging at him, accusing him, telling him. Satan was jealous of Job. Satan was jealous of Job. And you guys know the story, and I hope you know the story. If you don't, please get in your word. Get in the word of God and read the story. Everything was restored and more. When Job went through that trial, that test, everything in his life was restored. His children, not the same children. We won't get the same things necessarily, but his children. He had more children, new children. Money, finances, flocks. He was blessed beyond measure. When we give our lives to God, when, we, when our faith don't waver, we understand that God has the final word. The story of Joseph. I love Joseph and I love the story. There's, there's a lot to this story, to all of them really. But if you'll get in, you'll read these individual stories and just apply them to your life, how God can use you in these situations. I want you to know this morning that some of you might be people who are supposed to reach a thousand people. And that might be where you're at. Some of you, like David, tens of thousands. That doesn't matter how many people you're supposed to reach. What matters is is that you reach the people that you're supposed to reach. It matters that you reach the full potential that you're supposed to have. Doesn't matter what your full potential is because, you know, Uwe's full potential might be different than mine. He might be called to reach thousands upon thousands and me only a thousand. And that's okay because I don't want to reach 995. Or 998, 99, but I want to reach the thousand, have the full potential that God has for me. Same as Uve. And I don't want to be jealous because Uve has more to reach than me. Wow, what would that be? What kind of person would I be to be like, wow, he gets more than I get? I'm satisfied with what I've got. And I know right now, listen, I'm satisfied with what I got, and I have not reached my full potential. You haven't either. But our striving is that we reach the full potential that God has for us, to walk in the fullness that he has for us, knowing that he has the final word in everything. Joseph was a neat character, but he never let his faith down. Joseph was favored by his mother, by his father. He had a coat that was made for him of many colors. This coat was different than the brothers' coats. This coat was different than the other coats that people had seen. It was a coat of many colors. It was an expensive coat. Probably had longer sleeves because Joseph wasn't going to be a man according to his mom that would have to work hard in his life. Joseph, his mom had great dreams for Joseph. But Joseph was also, listen, he was a dreamer. And he would tell of the dreams that he had. He would tell the dreams of how his brothers would, would bow down to him. They didn't like that. They didn't like hearing those kind of things. But he was a dreamer. And I know some of you are dreamers. Do not let go of your dreams. Know that God is going to fulfill your dreams in and out. He's going to fulfill the dreams that he has for you. It's important that you guys know to not give up on your dreams. And I want you to also know that in your dreams or in your idea of maybe outside of your dreams, leaning on your own understanding of what God has for you, that's not what he wants for you. He wants you not to lean on your own understanding, but know who you are and who you are. And that means to know what he has for you. 
That means to know the things that he has for you, not the things that you want to do in life. Because everything you want to do in life doesn't mean that's what you're going to be or that's what you're going to do. I remember that I wanted to be, I, I literally wanted to be a rock star. I, I mean, I thought I was going to be a rock star. I'm far from it. I thought I was. I acted like I was. I dressed like I was. I even took on Bon Jovi name, grew the hair long, frosted. Thought, here we go. We're going to do this thing. Nah. That's not what God had for me. That's what I had for me. That's what I wanted for me was to be a rock star, but, but that's not what God wanted for me. I couldn't have reached my full potential doing what I wanted to do in life. But doing what God wants for me to do in life is where I'm going to reach my full potential. I'm excited about what God has for me. I'm excited about what he has for you. But we have to walk in the knowing that we know that we know who we are and whose we are. We have to know that. We have to not be afraid of someone else succeeding above us. We have to not be afraid of someone else doing better than we're doing. We just need to do the best that we can do and do what he's called us to do. Joseph was a dreamer, and you'll remember that through, Joseph, through the story of Joseph, his brothers got jealous of him because he was favored. He went to check on them one day, and when he went to check on them, they ended up throwing him in a pit to die. And a caravan come by, and they ended up selling him for slavery. Then he ended up getting thrown in prison because he was accused of raping the Pharaoh's wife. I mean, all these things were thrown at him. I mean, can you imagine? We've had some pretty nasty stuff thrown at us, but all these things were thrown at David or at Joseph. But what did he do? He kept his faith. He knew the promises that God had for him, and he stayed with those promises. He knew the dreams that he had. And by the dreams that he had, listen, by the dreams that he had, he got to get out of prison. By knowing the dreams, by interpreting dreams, by understanding who he was, he, he was, he was made second in command. Going from a, a young man who was thrown into pit and then into slavery and then the accusations that would have life in prison, he became second in command. Why? Because he had faith in God. Because he, he knew who he was. He knew his identity. As Randy talked about that, the identity class. And in the end, his brothers came and they bowed down to him. That very first dream that he had come to pass. Why? Because God has the final say. If we will let him in, he has the final say in our life. I love the prodigal son story. You got a young man that wants it his way. I want it my way. I want to have everything that I want to have. I want to do it my way. Asked for his inheritance early. And his dad gave it to him. Didn't want to, but he gave it to him because he asked. He was going to let him, he was going to let him learn the life lesson. I've learned so much life lesson. I can tell you story after story of my life lesson. But this young man took his inheritance, and he went out, and he, he blew it all. He partied. He had these people that said that, he, that they were his friends, that he partied with. And what happened? When the money was gone, the friends were gone. When the money was gone, his identity was gone. He was somebody until he had nothing. And then his eyes, he, came, he became nobody. He's wallowing with the hogs, eating with the hogs. And he said to himself, if I could just go back to my dad, at least I would be fed like the servants. At least if I go back to my dad, I would have a warm bed to sleep in. And so that's what he did. He set off to see his dad and just to serve his dad in that way as the servants did. But what happened? When his dad saw him, he came running. He came running to him, put new clothes on him, fed him with the best calf, put a ring on his hand. 
some of you might not have a father that'll run to you, an earthly father that'll run to you. But I want you to know this morning that you have a heavenly father that will drop everything to come to you. If you will let him in, he will drop everything to come to you. God has the final word. We have a part in this. We have a part in this, no matter how big or small our part is, we have a part. As a ministry, we have a part. As a people, we have a part in this that God's doing. We have a part. Tell you a story of a young man who grew up with pretty much nothing as far as material things. A young man that went hungry at times. His clothes were always ripped, torn. Went to school and was made fun of because of the tears in his clothes. And who knew now that you can wear all these rips in your clothes and it's all good. A young man who struggled in his identity who had been at times laying out in fields strung out on drugs not knowing where he was or what was even going on a young man who wanted to commit suicide so many times you can't even count a young man who had four dads but by the early age of 16, the young man who dealt drugs to make money. The young man who felt like there was no value in him at all. That young man was me. I want you to know that God has to find a word. God has to find a word. When I decided to give my life to Jesus, he has to find a word. When I decided to give my life to Jesus, all those things were gone. And I used all those things as a testimony of where I was and where I am now and what he's brought me to. I might not be the best preacher, and I'll never claim to be the best preacher, but I know that I'm called. I know that God's tweaking me and God's encouraging me and God's strengthening me. I mean, I went straight from bounty hunting to full-time pastoring like that. Like, literally like that. But I love it. I love what I'm doing. I love what God's doing in me and through me. Because we are a part, we all get to be a part This city, we get to be a part of this city of Bartonsville. And I love what God, the part that he's called us to in this church, this little body of people, what he's called us to, what he's called us to do. I love that this morning. Martinsville had things stolen from it, the water, the healing water, and some of you might not even know that, the the sign that this downtown, the waters, how the waters brought healing how the waters brought healing to people. They come from all over the world to get in the water to be healed. There was 12 sanitariums in the city and people come and they would just sit in the water and you're healed of all kinds of things. And that was stolen by contamination. But what did God do? We've had over 2,700 healings in the water. Right over here, this pool, 2,700 healings in the pool. Why? Because God wanted to use this little body to make himself famous in this city. And that's what he's going to do. Jesus is touching people in the water, restoring the water. Why? Because God has the final word. If we will let him, he has the final word in our lives. 
If we will let him, the city, he will have the final word in this city, and our city will be one for him. In the schools, if they would let him have the final word, our children would have a great school to go to. If we let God have the final word, it doesn't matter what we think, as long as we let him have the final word and let him have his way in our lives. He had the final word with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He had the final word with them. They didn't burn up because he made them fireproof because he had the final word. With Daniel and the lion's den, he had the final word. He could have been eaten up, but no, God said no. Why? Because Daniel loved him. Instead of the lions eating him, he laid with them, slept with them. Let's stand. And I know there's some here this morning that may not know Jesus. You may have stepped back, stepped away from God. And you're here for that second chance. Our God is a God of second chances. For me, it was probably tenth chance. God is a God that wants to redeem his people. I'm asking you this morning, will you let God have the final say in your life? We're going to turn the inmate music up. I just encourage you this morning. If you let your guard down. If it's been a while since you picked your the word of God up and read. If it's been a while since you prayed for things other than yourself or things that you want. If you've neglected the things of God, I encourage you to come this morning and give it to him and pray. He must have the final word in your life in order for you to have the fullness that he has for you. No matter what you go through, no matter what you got to go through, he has to have the final word in your life to fulfill the call that he has for you. Does anybody want to pray this morning? Don't be afraid. No one's going to judge you. Look down on you. It's just going to be encouraging. I'm early, so I'll wait a minute. you're not in the center of God's will right now, listen. You've got to come and give yourself to Him. You've got to come and give your life to Him. You've got to come and give your heart to Him. If you're not in the center of His will right now, you're over here or you're over here, back and forth across the center. It'll just get you hurt. You might be playing with the traffic right now, back and forth. I remember I was behind a guy when I was in law enforcement, and I was watching him go over the line. I let him go once, twice, and the third time I pulled him over. Why? Because sometimes we as Christians will we'll get so close to the line of playing when trifling with sin and trifling with those things that when we fall, we'll fall over the line and we'll have a head-on collision with the world. I want to stop this guy from having a head-on collision with the, the cars that were coming. And I want to stop you from having a head-on collision with the world this morning. 
Because when you trifle in sin, when you trifle in your life and you trifle with those things, the world will grab you. And sin will take you farther than you've ever wanted to go. If you're playing with God this morning, please don't. Your life is at stake. Your soul is at stake. And not only yours, but if God's put a call on your life, and I know he has, there's people out there waiting on you to get right with him. You might under, not understand this, but I want you to know this morning that if you do not live your full potential for God, there will be people that don't make heaven. It's just truth. So pick anybody in here that you wouldn't give your whole self to God for. That's what it would look like. Yeah. Father, we just thank you this morning. Lord, I know there's more here that have stayed back at their seats, and I just say right now, Lord, you bless them. You would encourage them. You would give them strength, Father, to press on, to push through the battles, the trials, the hurts, the fatigue, all the things that they're going through, Lord, that you would help them to push through those things and get on the other side make you king of their life, make you Lord of lords. So I bless you this morning, Jesus, your love and mercy and your goodness to all of us. Jesus' name. Thank you, guys.